Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And uh, today we've got an exciting video for you. We have confirmed the locations of the twin 20 millimeter gun mounts. If you've been watching this channel for a while, uh, you know that we've done a couple videos in the past. We'll, we'll link some of them in the description below, uh, where we've bemoaned uh, the fact that the twin 20 millimeter guns allegedly added uh, by July of 1945 excuse me, allegedly added by June of 1945, um, used the same exact base as the twin mounts. So we can't use the archaeological evidence of going around the ship and looking at weld marks to see which mounts were replaced, uh, single mounts being replaced with twin mounts. Uh, remember, a plan is just a plan. So even though blueprints or schematics in books or things like that may say that they show where things were supposed to be, that does not mean that it's what's carried out. And also remember that memory is fallible. So interviewing World War II guys, even World War II 20 millimeter gunners and asking them which positions were twin mounts isn't great because we're doing this 70, 80 years after the fact. They don't necessarily remember it. And uh, some of them do, but because some of them don't, you don't trust it until you can verify it in some way, in some other way. Uh, so as historians, we very much have a trust but verify mentality here. We, we've got several books that say that Iowa class battleships got this many twin mounts by this date and this many by that date. Um, but it takes photo analysis, archaeology of, of your artifact, shipboard archaeology, to figure out uh, and corroborate these stories that you're hearing from uh, oral histories and from written works. And uh, today is one of those days where I actually got to curate something. So we've got a photo album here uh, from a uh, lieutenant commander who served on the battleship. Uh, we believe from muster rolls that the same man was on board during World War II and then was reassigned to the ship during her first Korean deployment in 1950-1951. Uh, that is lieutenant, later lieutenant commander, USNR, uh, David Allen Glow. And he's donated a couple of his photo albums to the ship. This one is from July of 1951. And um, he has a couple of these pictures here on this page in particular that shows the ship. He probably took them from a Liberty launch of some sort. It's also worth pointing out that the four Iowas don't necessarily get the same configurations and they definitely don't get them at the same time period. Modifications are made as they go into the yard and usually one or two are in the yard at a time and then they'll rotate out and the next one goes in. So there may be months between when changes are made on individual ships. Uh, however, these uh, pictures from July 28, 1951, when New Jersey is in Yakuska, Japan, relieving Missouri of being on the gun line off Korea, shows uh, a series of pictures from the ship's boat which show all of the 20 millimeter gun positions. And uh, we're gonna show those on screen. I have, you can, you can see how big these, these uh, pictures are. They're maybe three inch by two inch. Um, we've taken some zoomed in scans of them that we'll show you. And you may be able to see some pixely black outlines that show what the guns are. Uh, I had to use a magnifying glass to figure it out myself. So uh, I'm going to pull out one of my model ships and we're going to go through it and I'll show you which positions got which guns at which dates. So here we've got my Kobe model from the video we filmed the other day. Uh, there's a link in the description down below if you haven't seen that one already. But we've modified it uh, to appear like the Iowa class battleships when they first entered World War II. So first off, they have uh, at this time 52 20 millimeter guns for the regular Iowa class. They will drop that to 49 to increase the number of 40 millimeters uh, and um, eventually that will go up to 58 total and then down to 32. We're getting ahead of ourselves there. So uh, let's go about a stern here. The pulpit position does not exist yet, so there are no 20 millimeter guns up there. The forward two quadruple 40 millimeter positions have three 20 millimeters in them in a special tub instead. Uh, moving 
back aft. The bridge has not yet been enclosed. The superstructure up top is narrower. They've got the older type air search radar here, the square uh, bed spring type. And the other 40 millimeter guns here are replaced with a triple position. Also, you'll notice we carry three aircraft. That's what the Iowas were originally supposed to have. Um, eventually, they found that the one sitting on the deck was useless. And without a hangar to maintain them in, um, it, it just made more sense to leave those on ships with hangars and swap them out uh, as you go to shore installations. Let's see some of these changes in action. First off, the uh, 20 millimeters and 40 millimeters swapping out. So here we are losing these three 20 millimeters. Two of these three are repositioned to the pulpit at the bow. One is completely deleted. Coming back here, these three guns are removed and replaced with 40 millimeters. But two of the three are moved back to a position by turret number three. So we have gone from 16 40 millimeters up to 20, and we've gone from we've gone from 52 20 millimeters and dropped it down to 49. We've lost three to gain um, 16 more 40 millimeter barrels. Other changes at this time. The extra plane is removed. This radar is going to be swapped out with a newer type. Up here, the air defense warfare platform is going to be built out. Remember on New Jersey and Iowa, it ends up forming a plus shape while on uh, Missouri and Wisconsin, it's more of a T-shape with the front being broader. Uh, worth pointing out that with all these gun numbers, Iowa is missing this 40 millimeter position throughout the entire war. That is intentional because she has a flag bridge down here for a fleet admiral. And this gun obscures that level of the conning tower, which none of the other Iowas have. So they had three 20 millimeters on here. So Iowa consistently has four less 40 millimeter and three more 20 millimeter than any of her sister ships. Uh, and of course, speaking of the bridge, that is enclosed. Those are your major observable changes. By June of 45, the ship has gone through a Puget Sound refit and she gets eight uh, twin 20 millimeter guns at that time. This position is subbed in for a twin, as is the one opposite it. This position right here, and then these two at the bow. So that's going to increase the number of guns from 49 or 52 on Iowa to 57 or 60 on Iowa. Uh, so this is her best uh, World War II anti aircraft with 57 of the 20 millimeters and 20 of the quadruple 40 mouths. So those are positions here, 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 the triple stack here, there, there, and of course all the way at the fan tail. So uh, this is how she ends World War II, but she gets more changes in the 1950s. And so this is an older Kobe Missouri kit that I have heavily updated through pieces that you can buy on the Kobe website as extras. Um, this is my personal kit. They, they sent me this one to review. I already own this one. I already shop with that company. Um, but again, this is heavily modified from the base kit that you could get before these came out. Let's just move this guy out of the way. The biggest problem with this, of course, is that it only comes with 63 printed on it. I got this close. So, big changes in here. 
All of the 20 millimeter guns are removed when the ship is mothballed in 1948. In 1950, when they reactivate the ship, they do not replace all of those positions. So this big tub back here, which had nine guns in it, is completely removed, and they put in a shack for projecting movies. Likewise, the airplane catapults have been removed and replaced with a boat park. Originally, the boats were supposed to be up here in the superstructure, and there were supposed to be cranes there to lower them in the water. But having wooden and gasoline-filled boats there in the superstructure was dangerous for the ship, and they're all removed in World War II and replaced with the extra anti-aircraft guns. The former aviation crane here at the fantail is retained to lower the boats into the water and pick them back up. The mast should be a tripod with a different radar antenna on it by this time. And you'll notice the range finders from turret one's turret have been removed as opposed to on turret two and three. Likewise, the fifth 36 inch searchlight has also been removed. Uh, another major difference is we're no longer in our wartime camouflage scheme. Uh, she's now in the peacetime scheme with uh, bare wood decks and the haze gray side. We've talked about this a lot on the channel. Uh, in the age of radar, camouflage just isn't that important. So, uh, which positions are retained? They exclusively equip the ship with twin 20 millimeter mounts, and there are 16 of those positions, eight on each side. So they chose to leave back here. Remember, this one was still a single at the end of the war, and this was already a double. Uh, so they just put two doubles down here. The main deck ones are easiest to service from magazines and ready service lockers, so these tend to be saved. However, uh, the ship does ship a lot of water on this level, so they do keep some in the superstructure as well, and that gives them a better angle for shooting down at small boats, mines, things like that that these guns are retained for. They're not much good against jet aircraft at this point. The aftermost position up here, which was swapped out for a twin, is also retained. In this model, uh, this should be back here and this should be up here, but there was no way to make that work easily without heavily modifying it. This tub here had originally been two singles on Iowa and New Jersey or three singles on Missouri and Wisconsin. On New Jersey, this was replaced with a pair of doubles. Uh, this position here used to be two singles. They made it into one double. I suspect that they left the two superstructure positions here as uh, single mounts was because it left more ready service lockers from where there used to be double mounts. So they had all of these extra 60 round drums made up. And then of course the forward two positions, which had already been changed out for twins uh, during World War II are brought back, the pulpit and this position back here. Uh, and finally, this 20 millimeter position right here is swapped out for a pair of two-pounder saluting guns. Four, three, two, one. Salute. That's what I'm representing with these single mounts. Now that you've seen where the guns are, let me show you what I think is the best book about the ship currently in print. This is a visual tour of Battleship New Jersey by John Miano. John is a volunteer here on the battleship, and he's gone through every single blueprint of the Iowa-class battleships that we have. Uh, and I believe that while New Jersey's blueprint collection is not complete by any means, it is the most extensive collection of any of the Iowa-class battleships. So John did a tremendous amount of research on the blueprints here with the museum and uh, put this into a series of books. Volume 1, uh, which I have right here, came out last year. Uh, this is an overview of uh, the structure of the ship and, and uh, things about the ship that he got from going through the ship firsthand. What I love about this book, as opposed to other similar books like uh, Friedman's U.S. Battleships, which I absolutely love, Friedman is working through blueprints. He's got historic pictures of the ship, uh, and he's got drawings of the ship in there. Um, but he doesn't have pictures of inside the ship that he took. Likewise, the anatomy of a ship books that are out there are great books, 
But um, as far as I know, the uh, authors of books in that series have never been on board an Iowa-class battleship. And there are some inaccuracies in those books that people like me who spend way too much time on Iowa-class battleships notice. Uh, so what I love about John's book is it has a tremendous number of pictures of this ship in it. Uh, it makes a great holiday present. And in particular, the page that uh, gives John his uh, credit as a uh, scholar is this page 10 and 11, where he has drawn out where the various, um, where his research led him to believe that the actual um, anti-aircraft positions were. So, and uh, you might have seen these drawings pop up in the video. Uh, he graciously allowed us to use these, these drawings of his in the video so that we could show you uh, where these changes are in addition to in my model. Uh, so this, we have now proven that John's research in this book, based on period documentation, is fully accurate, whereas other books are either inaccurate or just don't have this level of detail because they weren't on the, weren't on the ship. Uh, so John's a good friend of mine, and I highly recommend his books and uh, the work that he did researching the ship. Keep an eye out for other books in his series. One of my favorite things are his, uh, he's basically redrawn the 1980s blueprints. There is no blueprint of the ship in her final configuration in 1991 before she's decommissioned. But John has gone through every single room on the ship and changed them from the 1982 Book of General Plans, which is the most recent one, to uh, what is actually reflected in the ship during the end of her career. And then he goes through them space by space uh, with historic photos, with photos he's taken, uh, with some photos that I've taken, with some photos that have been supplied by the other three Iowa-class battleships and uh, put together a really comprehensive tour of the ship. So, cannot recommend this book enough. There's a link down in the description of where you can get a copy of it. If you're interested in a copy of John's book, remember there's a link to it in the description down below. Makes a great holiday gift idea. Also, we're gonna raffle off a couple of these that John has graciously given the museum. Uh, so check the link down below for a way to sign up for that raffle as well. Do you think there's any room to modify New Jersey's anti-aircraft battery? Let us know in the comments section down below what you would change about it. Specifically talking about her World War II anti-aircraft battery. I really like the plans that existed to, uh, to swap out the 40 millimeter guns with three inch guns during uh, the 1950s. Um, but in that age, before missiles, when guns were still used for anti-aircraft, um, the ship's first five or ten years in service, let us know what modifications you think the Navy should have made to the Iowa-class battleships to make them better anti-aircraft ships. That did end up being their primary role, escorting the carriers. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, subscribing, and by supporting researchers like John Miano, who is a volunteer on the battleship, so that he can continue to put out works like this that advance both my scholarship as the museum's curator and our collective scholarship through these videos and through these publications. Thanks for watching.